So, you know, speaking about seed oils, you know, that's something that, that certainly the proponents of seed oils try to try to pretty say, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. I know that you're uh, going to have a, a, a debate with Lane Norton in, uh, I think, February, you said. And well, that, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and he, and he's someone that, that, uh, from what I understand, doesn't, doesn't think that seed oils are, are that big of a deal that actually mm. aren't a problem. So what are, what are your thoughts on, on seed oils? Just sort of uh, flesh those out a bit. Well, the interesting thing about seed oils is that we've got research data that demonstrates their harm, mm. but I guess that the problem has been, we've had limited mechanistic understandings or at least a widespread knowledge of the mechanistic understandings of their harm have not been well known. So it comes down to a couple of key things. So first of all, there's, a, I guess, there's a, a common view within the low carb sphere that omega-6 fats are inherently inflammatory. And because seed oils have abundant omega-6 fats, that's why they're harmful. And this has been borne out of associational research where we have a look at the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 fats within people's red blood cells and other tissues of their body. And we find that people with more omega-6 fats in their red blood cells do far worse on multiple parameters, uh, multiple autoimmune diseases, allergic diseases, so on and so forth, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory diseases, you name it. It's uh, having a high level of omega-6 fats in your cells is associated with adverse outcomes. But this is only associational. And I personally do not believe that it's an inherent property of omega-6 fats that is harmful. And I don't believe that's what's making seed oils harmful. So the, the fact remains that omega-6 fats are essential oils. Without them, we're not doing so good. That is the very definition of essential. So there's two key properties of seed oils that makes them harmful. So the first one is its tendency to oxidize. So the tendency to oxidize, it, it, it's akin to the chemical process of rusting. It's what happens when you have free radicals that rip electrons away from other molecules or atoms and they damage them. And if you do that to a fat or a, a protein within the body, that's going to uh, have deleterious outcomes. And we know that seed oils, by virtue of their chemical structure, these polyunsaturated bonds, where these double bonds between two adjacent carbon atoms, that is very, very reactive. We've also demonstrated that when you consume an oxidized oil, that gets incorporated into the lipoproteins of your body. Things like chylomicrons or what most people would have heard of, low density lipoprotein, what is called bad cholesterol, LDL. And then you've got circulating oxidation products. So think about it. If you've got an unhealthy diet, your LDL basically becomes a vehicle to carry oxidation around your circulation. So that's the connection between uh, oxidation and damage of your blood vessels. And LDL is basically the, the vehicle for that. So that's obviously not going to be a good thing. So oxidation is a component of seed oils, which is, you know, uh, harmful. But one thing that is not well understood, and that's something which I'm going to hope to promote a little bit more over the coming months, is something which I term fake plant cholesterol. You would have heard of plant sterols or, or phytosterol. Mm -hmm. um, and these, these chemicals, I, I think we can mount a very strong argument that they, they are absolutely deleterious to the human body. And they are in high concentration in seed oils and vegetable oils. They're in basically every plant food. So we get a not insignificant contribution to our a phytosterol or fake plant cholesterol load from cereals by virtue of how much we eat. But on a gram for gram basis, seed oils provide us with the, with the most. Now, the thing is, this imitates cholesterol. And in some cases, the body can absorb it. But when it absorbs it, the body tries to do things with it that it would normally do, that it would normally use cholesterol for, but because of some molecular variation, very subtle molecular variation, it can't do it. So it basically leads to deficient functions of things that cholesterol is normally used for. Now, the irony is that we use these plant sterols to try and lower our body's lipoprotein levels because as you know, lipoproteins contain cholesterol. And if you can create defective cholesterol within the body, then it's going to have trouble synthesizing low density lipoprotein or synthesizing VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, which shrinks down into 
low density lipoprotein. So that that's how these our, our cholesterol levels, or you know what we call our cholesterol levels, our lipoprotein levels are actually lowered with plant sterols. So we often use this therapeutically to lower people's cholesterol. Mm. But here's a question for you. If this is such a good thing, what would happen to somebody who would absorb an unusually large amount of these plant sterols? They must have very good cardiovascular health because it would lower their cholesterol and it would be very good for them. That if we follow this theory through to the logical conclusion, that's where we should be. If plant sterols are good because they lower your LDL, people who absorb more plant sterols would do better. And this is in the context of the fact that most of us will only absorb about 1% of the plant sterols we consume because our body is doing its damnedest to try not to absorb them. It's mm. kicking them out. But if you consume a bucket load in seed oils in a standard Western diet, then some is going to get through. So we only absorb about 1%, but some people absorb a lot more. They've got a, a genetic uh, change in their DNA that leads to just excess absorption of plant sterols. That condition is called cytosterolemia. S-I-T-O-S-T-E-R-O-L-A-E-M-I-A. -E -E you can drop out the A if you uh, don't speak the Queen's English. <laughs> now, we can talk about the spelling thing between different countries later. Um, but cytosterolemia is a condition, and I quote, that is associated with advanced, severe, premature atherosclerosis. Huh. Yeah. So these plant sterols, which we're giving people to prevent heart disease, if you just happen to absorb more of them than is normal, then you're probably going to die of a heart attack. Well, that's a bit odd. So, I mean, these are the kind of things that we should be looking at. We should be understanding biology. Everybody wants to throw up, oh, well, I've done this epidemiological study and I've done that epidemiological study, and they don't really have any basis for understanding root cause mechanisms. So basically a lot of what they say is biologically implausible. I'll, I'll, let's go on to, you know, for biologically implausibility, the next time, you know, somebody says, oh, you shouldn't eat saturated fat. Play a little game. Okay, so why shouldn't we eat saturated fat? Because it will raise your LDL and LDL is bad for you. Okay, great. How does it raise my LDL? And they won't have an answer. There is no known plausible biological mechanism, either demonstrated experimentally or even postulated, by which saturated fat increases LDL levels, low density lipoprotein levels. And that's going to shock a lot of people. And in actual fact, what it is, is that on a standard Western diet where you're consuming vegetable oils, the plant sterols are lowering they're artificially lowering. They're taking your LDL level from a healthy, normal, physiological level, and they're lowering it. And all that happens if you remove the seed oils from the diet, you allow your LDL level to return to a normal physiological level. So let's talk about evidence for this. So we're making bold claims. We need, we need science. How about a study from British Medical Journal that looked at what happened when they supplemented people with different fats and they had a look at the impact on their LDL levels. So they used a coconut oil that was 96% saturated fat from memory. And the standard is about 92, but in this study, I believe from memory, it was 96% saturated fat. And they compared it with butter, which was only 66% saturated fat. So the people who consumed the butter, their LDL level went up moderate amount. What do you think happened to the people who consume the coconut oil? 96% saturated fat, given that, you know, we know <laughs> that saturated fat increases LDL. Yeah. Well, their LDL levels actually went down. Now, the interesting thing was there wasn't really much discussion about this in the paper. I actually had to go to one of the appendices to actually get the data. And when I saw it, I said, well, I can see why they're keeping quiet about that, because I'm sure that's not the point they're wanting to make. Bigger, but I mean, if they were genuine scientists, that would have been the headline of the paper. You know, saturated fat does not, you know, 96% saturated fat in coconut oil lowers LDL. I mean, that's an important empirical observation that informs our understanding of science. And instead, it's left to people like you and me to trawl through the papers and have a look at the appendices and the supplementary data to actually find where there's been a bit of mischievous reporting.